So hello, this is again Dr. Zia Ahmed for your online lectures on Matsumok by Mohsen Hamid. Today we are going to talk about chapter number eight. Uh, so if you people are online, give me your comments. I think some of the comments are there. Uh, is there any fresh comment if it comes up so that I may be able to guess whether my sound and picture is clear? Anybody can write the comment if the things are being received clearly. All right. So let's proceed. Mr. Vakas has uh, doubled my courage. And Hafsa Khan has also come up. That's good. And uh, we have a number of other people present as well. Uh, first of all, I would uh, pray and wish you very good luck in this difficult times that we are going through Corona thing. Uh, and I advise all, all of you to be very much careful, to be taking care of everybody around you and taking all the type of medicines and anything which is around you or the care which the government has advised, everything may be taken care of. Well, let's start with our business today. Uh, I'm starting with chapter eight, but uh, I must say that chapter seven is not that useful because it simply goes to talk about some of the friends of Mr. Uzi and the lifestyle they enjoy and the parties which they do and what happens in these parties. However, one thing was quite significant in that chapter that at a certain moment, uh, Daru or Darashiko becomes uh, upset with the idea that he is playing foul with the wife of his friend and at that time he feels bad up to some extent as well. It means that a good human being has not died in him altogether, though he's suffering from a number of issues in the last chapters we have read out. Uh, today's chapter that I'm going to display before you is really very significant and uh, that chapter uh, goes to discuss to you people something uh, about, as the title goes to say, what lovely weather we are having or the importance of air conditioning. So the matter of air conditioning is very much important. And in order to uh, start our discussion about air conditioning, I'm taking you to this very uh, small uh, passage uh, that we should be reading with you people. Uh, the matter of air conditioning will definitely come later on. First, we need to talk about the beginning of this chapter, and that's really very significant. I am calling it significant because uh, I'm calling it significant because it is just about me. The professor of English and the similar kind of thing will be talked about with reference to a professor. So let's read a few of the chapters to come to know what the professors are mostly and what do they do and what they try to say, what's going on in their brain and what is the type of thing that Mohsen Hamid is trying to highlight. So let me read that passage for you. It says, uh, it says, uh, the pioneer of academic commentary in this field is Professor Julius Superb. Although his ideas received a cool reception when first aired, they are now widely influential and are discussed not only in doctoral dissertations, but also in the boardrooms and living rooms throughout the land. Indeed, Lahore will not soon forget the superb professors presented at the provincial seminar on social class in Pakistan. So you can see one name has been given to a professor and it's going to be an imaginary professor and that's going to be Professor Julius Superb. Later on in the chapter, he will be addressed simply as Professor Superb. This Professor Superb is talking all the time on class distinction in Pakistan. So the theme of the classification uh, in Pakistan that the people are rich class, poor class people, and middle class people, that will be discussed with reference to that. And that is why the professor has been brought about here. We have been discussing that in Pakistan, the classes are different and every class has its own problems and issues. Every class is an opponent and antagonistic of each other, but they do survive with the help of that uh, antagonism even, or they do depend upon each other as well. So this is the type of thing that Mohsen Hamid will be discussing, but he discusses this thing with reference to air conditioning. I shall come to air conditioning later on, but first let me talk about these passages which are relevant to this professor. The professor, for example, look at this passage, which is quite visible for you. The professor says there are two classes, social classes in Pakistan. Uh, for example, according to him, the first group, large and sweaty, contains those referred to as the masses. The second group is much smaller, but its uh, members exercise vastly greater control over their immediate environment and are collectively termed as the elites. The distinction between members of these two groups is made on the basis of control of an important resource, air conditioning. You see, the elite have managed to recreate for themselves the living standards of, uh, say, Sweden without leaving the dusty plains of the subcontinent. 
They are a mixed lot, Punjabis, Pathans, Sindhis, and Balochis, smugglers, mullahs, soldiers, industrialists united by their residence in an artificially cooled world. They wake up in air-conditioned houses, drive air-conditioned cars to air-conditioned offices, grab lunch in air-conditioned restaurants, rights of the admission reserved, and at the end of the day, go home to their air-conditioned lounges to relax in front of their white screen TVs. And if they should think about the rest of the people, the great uncooled and become uneasy as they lie under their blankets in the middle of the summer, there is always prayer five times a day, which they hope will gain them admittance to an air-conditioned heaven, or at the very last, a long, cool drink during a fiery day in the hell. Okay, so that is the uh, passage which actually introduces everything. And uh, let's discuss this passage by saying uh, that, in fact, this passage is not only about the professor and the speech of that professor, uh, which he is uh, making with reference to his uh, monthly speeches on provincial seminars, but also is talking about the, uh, with the reference to air conditioning. So according to Mohsen Hamid, if there is a, a type of division among the people uh, in Pakistan, it's based on air conditioning. And according to him, air conditioning is just like creating Switzerland environment without moving the plains of Punjab or Pakistan. Uh, you can create this type of environment by air conditioning. So in that way, the air conditioning divides the people into two groups, according to him. One group is a sweaty mass of the people. Sweaty, how beautiful the style is going to be in order to recognize or to give a type of identity to the to the group of the masses who are sweating all the time in the summer season, their clothes, their bodies, their their every part of the body may be wet with sweat. So they are the people who are sweaty and they smell as well because of the sweatiness and that's the type of the people who are lower class people according to Mohsen Hamid. In comparison to that, we have another class of people who are really very rich people and they can afford the power, they can use electricity in order to run their air conditioning system and can create a very good air conditioning system for themselves. So as a result, the class difference is created with reference to the thing which is called air conditioning. The similar kind of class difference was also created by Sara Soleri, as I have pointed out in the text also. Uh, in her book, Meat Less Days, there she says that some people in Pakistan have plenty of food and some people do not have any food at all. And that is why the groups can be have divided into haves and have nots in Pakistan. And she has used the word inside the kitchen and outside the kitchen. Now, inside the kitchen are the people who have plenty of food, plenty of money to buy the food. And outside the kitchen are the people who possibly do not possess this much of the food. So in that way, Sarah Soleri, what she pointed out in Meatless Days, has also been pointed out by Mohsen Hamid, but he's taken the symbol of air conditioning. So air conditioning is the type of thing which definitely divides the people of Pakistan. The elite class sleeps in air conditioning rooms, travels in air conditioned cars, spends time in air conditioned uh, offices and after that ultimately goes back to the homes the lounges where the state that is also air-conditioned ones not only this is the case they also go to such parties where there is a lot of air conditioning in that way they have a different word and the writer very ironically says that these people regularly go to uh, go to their prayers also and pray to god and think that ultimately they will be able to get the air conditioned heaven so what a kind of irony it's going to be that even religion has promised everything for the cool heaven if you are doing good things in this world so they try to create the same cool heaven in this world by by doing the uh, arrangement of air conditioning so air conditioning is the thing which creates a divide among the people. But this is a big mistake of us because it, throughout the ages it has been seen that whenever human beings try to control the environment, they fail. They do not try to adapt themselves according to the environment, rather they try to change the limited environment according to them. And that's why today we are facing these corona things and we are facing a number of other issues as well. But even this is not going to be the solution which will come clear in the next coming passages. But so far, let us see that Mohsen Hamid very clearly, very cleverly has divided the people of Pakistan by using the symbol of air conditioning. So let's go forward in order to see what further things we can have. For example, uh, concentrate on the text passages that I have indicated. Again, see uh, that there are, uh, uh, there, there are some indications in order to go back to the professor. What do the professors think about him? What, what mostly happens in our classes? For example, if you look at the uh, red 
lined words or the sentences, the parts of sentences, you will be able to see that students mostly are bored and upset during these lectures. And some of the students go to sleep even they're so much bored. And some of the students are really very active during the speeches of the professors and think that professors all the time lost people and they, they are not active in that way. So uh, the, the students have this type of behavior. And I may uh, point out while standing here for you people that all of you may not be that active by listening to my this video live lecture. And some of you may be sleeping actually, as Mohsen Hamed has pointed out. And this thing is a reality, you know, people. I have just asked a question to one of my classes that have you done your assignment? And the answer was, sir, which assignment? It means that they didn't listen to my lecture so carefully in order to understand in order to get the idea of which question they have to answer. So that much carelessness was available. And Hamid is right in suggesting that some of the people are like that. But in this passage, we get the name of uh, Murad Badshah. According to Mohsin Hamid, uh, Professor Spurb had this student, Murad Badshah. And that Murad Badshah was very much interested in listening to him. He was a loyal student. He was a faithful student. And that is why Murad Badshah was paying his full attention. For example, look at the words which we, uh, which I have written. For example, sleep, uh, leave the sleep thing. Just come to the bottom of the passage where Murad Badshah has been talked about. He's been a very active attendee of the lectures, and Murad Badshah, therefore, even if has turned into somebody who is not that good a person, but still he is in love with the professor and listens to that professor very actively and very attentively as well. Murad Bhatia thinks himself a very powerful person because he doesn't care for the air conditioning and rather thinks that he is the one who is very good without air conditioning because he thought that it's very manly that one should be sweating and one should be giving smells. And besides that, he was a rickshaw driver and that is why he was able to smell the other people as well and feel the sweat of other people as well. He thought of taking baths instead of going to the air conditioning room. So that is why three times a day he took the baths. And that was some of the good qualities of Murad Badshah has also been highlighted for us uh, through this metaphor of air conditioning and sweating. So Murad Badshah, according to this sweating thing, is one of the people who are uh, belonging to, you know, uh, labor class or the less powerful class. And on the other hand, we have the people like Uzi, like Muntaz. These are the people who belong to the elite class and they run the air conditioners as well. So leaving all these things here, let's talk more about Murad Badshah. And you will be surprised how Mohsen Hamid has once again returned to something with, to which every post-colonial, every post-modern writer returns and tries to discuss the thing in that way. For example, this paragraph says, let's have a reading, small reading. Murad Batsya was a firm believer in the need for a large-scale redistribution of wealth. After Professor Spur's speech, he vowed to break the barrier that separated the cooled from the uncooled. Cooled and uncooled, again, it's going to be air conditioned and unair conditioned, or sweaty people like himself. Indeed, he used this principle to justify his piracy campaign against yellow caps, since they were not only taking market share from rickshaws, but were air conditioned as well. He was fond of asking his victims, why should you be cool? A populist, a rebel against the system of hereditary entitlements responsible for cooling only the laziest minority of Pakistan's population. And he embraced Dara Shiku as a partner when the later fell from cooling. So this is very important paragraph where a common person, a rickshaw driver, is thinking in the terms that the wealth should be equally distributed. And this thing he tries to apply on the taxis, yellow caps, which was introduced by Nawaz Sharif of that time, the prime minister of that time, and the rickshaws, which he's, you know, the, which he's driving. And in that way, the taxis, the yellow cabs, differentiate again from the rickshaw people. The taxis are air conditioned, and so rickshaws are non-air conditioned. Rickshaws belong to the sweaty people. Taxis belong to yellow cabs, belong to the air conditioned people. So that again sets the kind of divide among the people. And that is why Murad Bacha was quite against these such things. Because on the one hand, his business was being spied because of these air conditioning thing. But also he wanted an equal distribution of wealth. And this is what is called as Marxism. Karl Marx theories are applicable everywhere. And here too, Mohsen Hamid is taking the support of Karl Marx in order to describe this thing. Why Murad Badshah was thinking in these terms because of the inequality of distribution of wealth. And while Marxism puts a lot of uh, you know, emphasis on the equal distribution of wealth and work and rights and duties. So in that way, Marxism is quite involved into such passages. Uh, very interestingly, at the end of the passages, if you can see the line, 
the writer says that uh, Murad Bhatia was in friend with Darashku because Darashku just recently has dropped from the cooling area, from the air conditioned area. I mean, the class from which he belonged to already was the air conditioning class. And after that, he comes back to the normal sweaty class because his power is cut, because he's hanging in between two classes, the rich class, elite class, and the poor class. So in that way, the dropping and entry into the two borders is, is very important here, talking of the borders of the uh, elite class and the borders of the sweaty class. It is possible for the sweaty class to make a hard work to enter into or seek entry into the higher class, but it may also be possible some of the people from the higher class may be dropping down. We are going to enjoy this metaphor even further when we go ahead in this passage and see what happens further. For example, first of all, it will be talked about Aurangzeb, and later on it will be talked about Mumtaz. Both the passages which I'm showing to you people right now, these passages begin with a name. Uh, and uh, we have air conditioning as well. But the first passage has Orange Zeb loved ACs. The second passage starts with Mumtaz hated ACs. Now, here is something very, very interesting. Because Mumtaz and Orange Zeb both belong to the elite class, but one of them loved the ACs and other hates the air conditioning. So in that way, one person loves his own class, and but the other person does not love, rather hates that old class. Let us see what is the reason behind that, what is going to happen there. Aurangzeb, uh, as has been talked about in this paragraph, you will read it yourself, that he was all the time very happy. He wanted a big kind of air conditioning and wanted central air conditioning system whose remote control should be in his hand. And he wants that if the, if the electricity fails for air conditioning, he should have a separate dedicated generator of electricity so that his his uh, enjoyment of the AC should not fail at all. And even during the summer, he would take a heavy blanket on him in order to avoid shivering at the middle of the summer. At that time, so big heavenly type of environment he can create. But on the other hand, if you look at the second passage, Mumtaz doesn't love that. She hates it. She doesn't want to be there. And it was a big surprising thing for Aurangzeb, first of all in America and later on in the you know uh, in pakistan as well where heat was there but she didn't like this uh, this this uh, ac thing and she wanted to be out of that she did never there was a lot of coal most of the time and the history has been talked about that she once got pneumonia because uh, after uh, having a match she came home and she uh, slept or stood before the air conditioner after that she caught pneumonia from that time onward she was not liking uh, this air conditioning system at all. Now, what was happening with her that she could not tolerate air conditioning, while on the other hand, Uzi was the person who would definitely uh, love air conditioning, both were poles apart from each other, and that brings them separate even after living in one class. So intra-class and inter-class struggles and conflicts both go on. So here we are at this moment when there is an intra-class struggle between two members of the same elite class. And after that, let us see what happens with them. Uh, the, the birth of Muazzam to Mumtaz, that was also something which uh, made the things possible because Muazzam also wanted air conditioning. Aurangzeb also wanted air conditioning. So they ultimately settled that a very low uh, temperature will be maintained as our Wabda people suggest us most of the time that, okay, maintain to 26 or 22, do not go down to 15 or 10 and that will save as much electricity as you can. So in that way, a little bit of agreement is there. But still, Mumtaz has this type of problem that she doesn't want to be uh, air conditioned. She wanted a little bit hot and that is why uh, by the word hot i mean the hot season environment not the hot moment but this thing is taken by dara shiku also in a very important way that he is thinking about mumtaz psyche uh, that how such a woman who is very much rich educated independent and free would run out of air conditioning system and she would love the home where daru is present and their power is failed and air conditioning is absent all the time and sometimes he goes to think that perhaps this is the reason that Muntaz feels attracted towards him this is the kind of reason which creates a link or a type of friendship between these two people because it goes to connect Muntaz and Daru uh, it doesn't connect Aurangzeb and Muntaz and that way the differentiation happens because of 
of this connection and disconnection between the rich class and the poor class in that way temperature becomes very important hot season and coolness of their condition becomes very important which joins the people or which separates the people as well so in this world of ours among the rich elite people we have number of number of such people as well who would not like the air conditioning system uh, i have listened about many pakistani and multani women even who would not like to sleep in their conditioning system they would like to sleep on the, uh, on the on the roof in the natural environment instead of sleeping in their conditioning system they would like that and frequent quarrels and conflicts happen in their society as well so we have number of mumtaz is like that in our society as well and this incident or this example of running away from condition air conditioning cooling and not air conditioning not only is important with reference to the kind of connection between uh, daru and mumtaz but also it is important because there is a background to the history to the personal and family history of dara shiku let us see what had happened uh, because of which dara is very much concerned about sleeping on the roof let's go into the text once again in order to have a view of that what had happened for example let's go there and here you find after certain passages Uh, that dara shiku uh, remembers one of the night one of the nights when uh, power was off and uh, dara shiku's mother uh, who was uh, sleeping inside their conditioned room she would like to uh, then go to the roof there in order to sleep there and and she also took the charpai or the or the cot of dara shiku also there and after some time the firing was there and his mother was killed and early, early in the morning when he got up he found that the mom is killed and because of this killing it became a big trouble for dara shiku that absence of air conditioning can cause anything bad for him and this became a type of psychology of him. so mumtaz and dara both have a type of psychology um, happened or formulated because of their history same was the case with mumtaz that she caught pneumonia because of certain happenings in america and same is the case with this dara that he also had the loss of his mother because of this uh, lack of air, lack of power and air condition stopped she had to sleep upward so in that we both the characters are suffering from certain psychological troubles as well and that has been pointed out to us through mohsen ahmed these things make mohsen ahmed a post modern writer as well because he points out to the people in such a way without saying that they are bad or psychologically sick people he ind- indicates the things which happened to them and so that we may be able to analyze their brains as well so in this way as we have seen that mumtaz and dara have these type of feelings uh the bullets you know people on the eid on the marriages they They, they fire the bullets into air and some of the bullets can the stray bullets can hit anyone these are the things which have been talked about It's not that important Let's go forward to some other passage in order to understand uh, what are the things which are really very important in that way we have reached to the end of the chapter as well so let us repeat the whole thing that we have discussed today uh in the beginning of the chapter the chapter begins with the professor professor superb i don't know what name you people might have been giving me uh because i too behave in the same way that i try to give uh, a type of uh, lessons and moral lessons most of the time chastising you people teaching you people uh, telling you the secrets of the world how to live into that i have been pointing out to that i i always advocate equality but the equality comes with hard work that's the type of thing we should do in order to gain access to the resources of the world without work hard we should not claim that hard work as well so that is about professor superb and speeches involving marxism uh, with the help of which everything can be termed as equality based maybe the marxism of sociology or that of psychology or that of economy everything has been talked about in that way and very beautifully mohsen hamid has used the symbol of air conditioning in order to justify the class system existing there inside pakistan and uh, this uh, this has been told to be air conditioned or cooled class and then is the hot class sweaty class like murad badshah and uh, the inter intra and uh, interclass interference that has been talked about so we can say that this passage is or or this whole chapter is concerned about the differences of the people differences of the class and these differences are only because of the the kind of money they have or the control of resources they have the elite class has and the people who are not in the elite class or beautiful they have been called as the sweaty class these people do not have all, all these things and as a result they have the problem with them so that is what was important in this chapter note the question which you need to answer and do not say later on what was the question the question is that how does so note the question please everybody how does 
Mohsin Hamid use the symbol of air conditioning in order to explain the difference between the elite class and the sweaty class? This is one question. And uh, yes, if you forget to write, you can go to my video later on and uh, watch that as well in order to find out more about that question. Another question can be there about Professor Superb. What type of image of the professor has been portrayed by Mohsen Hamid? What type of image of the professor has been portrayed by Mohsen Hamid? These are the two questions out of this chapter. Uh, you people may be noting it down. Uh, in that way, the chapter ends all together. And next time, we shall be doing the next chapter and discuss that in detail as well. Now, if you have a question for me, I still have... Uh, five, six minutes to talk about the question, if any, you are having in your brain. Or in the comments, even, you can write in the comment section so that we may be able to talk about that as well. Uh, well, waiting for your question, waiting for your comment as well. So upload your question quickly. Well, saying maybe me better or not, I don't know. But professors are like that. It's a common consensus that professors are lost in the world of most of the time. This question comes from Muhammad Bakas. Sir, can this difference between rich and poor be finished? Well, till the time capitalism is there, till the time there is no socialism, as people have been saying, and history has proved, this difference cannot be eliminated. Uh, well, all the religions of the world, possibly, they have been trying to create an environment in order to create equality among the people, but it doesn't happen most of the time. Uh, we people live in a competitive world, and definitely competition is there. That depends on number of qualities which you have, number of things which you possess, and number of successes you gain. All these things combined together in order to create a class difference. This is an attraction for human being, and that is why, philosophically speaking, they, they try to gain as much as possible. So till the time this type of capitalistic system or capitalistic ideologies keep on, this class difference cannot be eliminated 100%. Though efforts can be made in order to improve the lot of the poor people as well. And then uh, there is... Uh, Samir Anand's question, sir, why the AC has been used for class defense? It's a very good question. Uh, air conditioning is the system which cannot be run by a poor person, even if he buys air conditioning. Because air conditioning is very costly, and after that, the footing of the bill of electricity is even more costly. So this thing can be done only by the elite who have profuse nests of money, who have a lot of money at their disposal, who can spare money for this type of purpose. And that is why uh, the, this is clear cut difference between the people who, who can run the AC and who cannot buy one and how to run that AC. They cannot pay the bills as well. That is why the symbol is the most appropriate one. Okay. There's another question from Gulshir, and uh, he says that if Uzi loves AC and Mumtaz hates how they live together. So the text goes to show the kind of conflict between them, though they are tolerating each other, and you know the upper class people can tolerate for a long time, and then the crack comes there, and that crack is now creating a type of friendship between Daru and Mumtaz. It's not living together in a, in a very good way, it's living together in a very bad way. So love-hate relationship exists between them. They love each other because they're husband and wife, but they hate each other as well because they have a different type of psychology as well. So they, they're not loving each other exactly as they should be loving as husband and wife. Uh, I have Amin Zahra's comment because most of the people used to sleep on the roofs. Yeah, at that time uh, when power was not available, when electricity was not available, the elites and the common people were the same, but this thing has created a divide among the people. Uh, Sheikh Dala says something, writer has uh, criticized our educational system, so who is responsible for it and what is the solution? Well, the writer is not criticizing education system, let me say. He is trying to point out the type of thing the professors say. And the professor have only the power to say. They cannot correct it. And they will continue to say as well. Professors will deliver the lectures. Professors will try to say certain things. And the people will listen to that as well. Because sometimes the matter of session marks and sometimes the matter of degrees there. Interest, taking interest is very little. Training is very little, and the people should be getting training. As the student knows that after attending the class, possibly his attendance will be marked. And when the attendance is marked, is half of the mark he can gain. Half of the things he can gain by his, uh, you know, sometime making an assignment, 
right or wrong. System is not wrong. We people are wrong. Human beings make the system. We people make the system. If I am right, if you are right, the system will be automatically right. So instead of blaming the system, let's blame ourselves, Sheikh Tala. Okay. Um, Sheikh Tala ke baad ab hum, let's move on to Ahmed Zahra's question. For my question is that, is it better to blame AC? No. AC cannot be blamed because the world is beautiful today only because of some of the crazy people as I have pointed out again and again. It is because of the hard labor of these people. It is because of the inventions and the explorations the scientists make. Today, if some kind of uh, medicine is not available for Kanona, how the humanity is suffering. And if someone invents that, the humanity will be safe from that. So that is the power of science and invention and exploration and research that is important for all of us. But then it depends how we use that. Use and misuse, both are the things very important. Atomic bomb, VCRs, mobile phones, everything has been invented for a good use, for the betterment of humanity. But we may misuse them as well. We are the human being, we do that. As for example, no Corona came and many of us Pakistanis are uh, preparing false and fake medicines and inventing, doing these things, which are quite harmful. What, what we do, this, this is a kind of bad humanity in us. And that is what is making the things bad otherwise. The inventions and explorations are not bad. So we cannot blame AC. We should blame ourselves. We should blame the people who are using that. Uh, Eman, you, sh you should write my question. I have answered Eman's question. Any more questions? We, we are left with just a few moments now. Any more questions or any more answers or comments from you people? When then Eman Zara said, then why Daru blame? Uh, Daru is blaming because his mom died. He was a child at that time. And he thought that air conditioning or lack of power is responsible for making them sleep on the roof. If power had not disappeared, he would not lose his mom. And chances happened in that way. In fact, he is trying to point out the kind of firing people make on their marriages. And after that, people make firing on celebration of, you know, getting the kite of someone or, you know, these things, I, I don't know. But the stray bullets can come and have hitting of anyone. Mumtaz says that it doesn't have any consequences, but Daru says that they, they, these do have the consequences. And as a result, uh, mom of Daru was killed and that is why he's blaming all that air conditioning. Not air conditioning, but the lack of power. Mm -hmm. So effects of this difference on society. Positively speaking, one can say that every person should struggle in order to achieve the higher possible level in the life. And that level can be achieved with reference to knowledge, reference to skills, with reference to money, with reference to the power, or with reference to the comforts of life, positively speaking. This generates competition. But negatively speaking, if you do, are not unable to do that, then you are not considered even a human being. And as a result, this is the negative side of that. I think uh, taking care of the positive side, it would be good to give chances to everyone to grow rather than just uh, blaming the people. And then comes Hafsa Khan. Uh, she says uh, the names in this novel are same as Mughal. Yes, of course. This is the postmodern technique of writing using the old stories, copying them and using their themes and their you know appearances or the characters or the names in order to link us with the past stories. Amin Zara, thanks. And uh, I have answered the question of Hafsa Khan. And here the time has come to make a stop this stream altogether. Uh, well, I have given you the questions in detail, two questions only to be answered by you people just in 150 words through MS Word and attaching it as well. Can we say that Umayya, Umayya has spoken ultimately. Can we say comment on that type of professors who harass the student in sessional marks or in the period? Well, uh, neither the professor superb in the text is like that, nor this professor's, your your professor, you know, Dr. Zia, uh, is of that type that will be terrifying. Most of the time you get equal marks, but all the time appreciation is there. When you people work more, the person gets more appreciation, right? It's not like that, okay? So that's it from me for this day. Let us call it a day now and hopefully seeing you next time. But do the questions as I have given to you. Thank you, everybody. See you next time. Bye-bye.